like you said, erred at the side of caution. Yeah, uh, and Jana from South Carolina was uh, wrote in that was wondering how to filter out all kind of chemicals and heavy metals. How do we filter out all kind of chemicals? All kinds. That, see, again, that's all. It goes back, yeah, it comes back to the same question. It depends. You, you just can't. You you have to know what you're filtering. Right. So there's you know there if you want to. It, you, ha you have to use a rifle here, not a shotgun. Correct. Yeah, that's that's the best analogy. Pick your you target. Want to target what, what what you're addressing. There's no otherwise you're just wasting l loads of resources needlessly. Well, and you may have a filter media that's not absorbing anything because that's not present in the water. Right. So uh, the the main thing is if it's a volatile or synthetic organic compound, activated carbon is the best way to go. Uh, anything that vaporizes at a lower temperature than water, any of your uh, aromatic hydrocarbons, all those good things, activated carbon is the best way to get those out. I mean, when you look at a specific filter media for its ability to remove the broadest range of contaminants, activated carbon is, is the one. We have Ginny from Colorado asking, what's, what's the best portable filter? Um, so th you can use a pitcher filter. Mm -hmm. It's kind of big, though. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also filters with... Uh, a bottle with a filter in it. Mm -hmm. um, those are typically about twice as much to use as say a, a drinking water system that you would attach to the end of your mm -hmm. faucet, uh, but they're effective and they're better than tap water. Um, me personally, the Mercola filter is small enough. If I was going anywhere for a week, I'd take it with me. Mm -hmm. Just because it, it, for something that small to do a half a gallon per minute, Whereas when you're squeezing through one of those filter bottles, it's very difficult to drink through it. You, you really can't give it to any kid under about six or seven years old because they're not strong enough to suck through it. Plus, it's frustrating when you're extremely thirsty. You're liable to stay hydrated if it's work to get your water. So I, I recommend taking the drinking water system with you. It comes with adapters. It'll fit probably most faucets. It probably is the best. You know, for convenience sake, if you're away for a weekend at a hotel, probably just the bottled water under those circumstances. Or if you're traveling, I know we don't like bottled water, but if you're traveling in a car, because when I'm thinking traveling, it's mostly plane, which obviously right. if soon you can't take your water with you. You could, but you know, most, I mean, they're charging to, to check in bags most of the time. And you know, eight mm -hmm. pounds a gallon, it adds up pretty quickly. Right. Um, so, but if you're traveling in a car, you could. Yeah, for sure. Fill your glass bottles, put them in the ice chest and take them with you. Okay. Uh, we have Carol from Utah asking if there's any risk of any type of parasites or bacteria getting through the, any filtration systems. And if we address this, but maybe you can. Oh, uh, yeah. So most filters are not designed to take out bacteria and virus. They count on the municipal water system's chlorination or chloramination process to, to kill the pathogens. Uh, the ones you really need to worry about are the chlorine resistant ones. Like uh, I remember in Wisconsin, in uh, 1995, I think 100,000 people got sick because of a single outbreak of cryptosporidium. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't get enough chlorine in the water, uh, those can survive chlorination. And I, like I said earlier, in two parts per million of chlorinated water, E. coli is going to be killed in two seconds. Mm -hmm. Salmonella is killed in seven seconds. So the likelihood of them being alive from the time the water travels from the municipal treatment plant to your house, even if there's a line break, that's why we have residual chlorine. By the time that water gets to your house, the likelihood of live bacteria is very slim. Whereas cryptosporidium can live 15 minutes and giardia can live up to 48 minutes, there is a chance that they got in through a line break or even left the municipal plant and are still alive when it gets to you. And those parasites, uh, I'll let you speak to the health effects of them, I, I do know they can be fatal. Yeah. And it, a lot of most of the time we have those outbreaks, it's really people who have some type of immune compromising condition, mm -hmm. like HIV or AIDS would be some, but any, uh, anyone's taking drugs or organ transplants. Anyone that's ever had Turista because of a trip to Mexico, which yeah. I know when I was in the Marine Corps, I got it on a unla or India unlawful or trip to Tijuana. I, I drank some water out of a bottled water container at a hotel the morning mm -hmm. after I woke up and uh, I was miserable for weeks and what the base doctors told me is I had cryptosporidia. Mm -hmm. So chances are, if you got sick in Mexico, that's what you got was one of those parasitic outbreaks. And if you don't ever want to go through that again, just make sure you're using a filter that treats submicron. And the other advantage you get to, there aren't a lot of things between the 0.5 and 3 micron range that you can take out that you'll benefit from by going smaller. The main ones are asbestos fibers. Those are all in the 0.8 micron range. So if it's a one micron filter, it'll take out cysts, but it won't take out asbestos. You want to try to look for something 0.8 microns or smaller. So 0.5 microns is the way we make your filter for you. And that way we can assure that we're getting 99.99% yeah. of the cysts and 99.9% .9 of the asbestos fibers. 
Yeah, interestingly, we I was in Colorado last week, and we did some whitewater rafting with our executive team. And uh, one of our executive team members, it was in the Arkansas River, which is really clear and clean, and it's cold, and it looks like tremendous. What He just didn't understand that you shouldn't be drinking that water. Giardia. Yeah, so he drank it, and he got pretty nasty. He set a case of runs the next morning. And mm -hmm. uh, so it's just a, a reminder that even though a, a water source may look pristine, uh, you have to be careful out there, unless you actually see it coming from its source, which would be a spring. Well, what I'd take from that is also that even if you're healthy, I mean, Grant, when I was in the Marine Corps, I was in great shape. I could run three miles in 17 and a half minutes, okay? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I was a 300 PFT score. I was in the best shape I'll ever be in my life, and I still got sick. Mm -hmm. It's not just immunocompromised folks that can get the going at both ends. From well, for something like cryptosporidium, yeah, it, it may be more. Of, which t tends to be you have to have a compromised immune system, because a lot of I mean the whole I think that was in '95 was in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. and uh, the whole town was exposed to that. And there's you would a hundred thousand got sick, and I think right. twenty died. Yeah, so it was significant. Yeah. But a lot of people didn't get sick. Right. Just well, a lot of people don't drink water every single day. Either, yeah, that's true. That, yeah. And do you have, speaking to that too, there's this issue of they don't. They drink it. We know the, the average American consumes a gallon of soda a week. A week. That's silly. So what, what source of water supply do most of the uh, commercial soda, like Pepsi and Coke, use? I mean, that was tap water. Is it tap, but is it filtered? Oh, absolutely. Th they have to, otherwise yeah. it doesn't taste good. Yeah. Same with beer. All the beer manufacturers filter the water before they, they make their it? beer. Um, most of them use carbon filtration. Carbon filtration. And your vodka manufacturers, after they make their batch of vodka, the they filter it with carbon filters okay. to take the edge off. Of. So, okay. yeah, absolutely. Now, the, the problem that Coca-Cola had in India is that they weren't treating the water. They were using groundwater, and it was too high in herbicides, and so they got shut down in India for like a month, I think. This was about two years ago. That's the danger of not treating your water is big time bad press. Yeah. So they, they for the most part, they, they treat the water because they want the soda to taste good. 